Oh, hey folks, welcome back to the shed. Uh, I'm shooting in a new spot with a new lens on the camera. Um, trying to get a better angle in here. And uh, I've got a new microphone too, so hopefully the audio turns out okay. But as you can probably hear, we've got a pretty rainy Northern California winter day here. Uh, and it's supposed to stay that way for, I think, the next five or six days or something. So uh, it's a good time to do some maintenance on the scope. Um, I noticed over the past few weeks when I've been shooting uh, that one corner of the images I've been pulling in uh, are getting egg-shaped stars again. Um, and from my experience you know, with this particular rig, that usually means something's going out of whack in terms of collimation. Typically it's been the uh, main lens module in the front, uh, but I actually suspect this time around it might be the draw tube. The reason is, uh, I recently picked up this new ATIC camera to replace uh, the one I was using before. And when I did that, uh, I kind of did a rough collimation by eye on this Moonlight focuser using uh, the methods here with the roller bearings. At first it seemed to work okay, the images were pretty sharp all the way to the corners, but uh, as time has gone on and the temperature has gotten colder, uh, the egg shapes are back in the corner. Um, so I'm going to run through that today. I'm just going to leave the camera rolling and hopefully uh, try to figure out what's going on. I'm going to give the head cam a go today and see how it works out. Haven't used it before. Hopefully uh, we get something good. I don't know how to tell if it's tilted right, but I'll find out in a while, I guess. So the thing that occurs here in Northern California, uh, in the Central Valley at least, is we get an extreme swing in temperatures from season to season. Here in the summer, uh, we can get up into the 100, 110s. And now in January here in 2019, uh, the temps last night dropped down to almost freezing. So we, we experience almost a 100 degree temperature swing uh, through the seasons, and that tends to wreak havoc on the tube. Um, I, I've noticed just in my focuser that between the seasons, uh, it's usually upwards of a quarter inch difference. Uh, thereabouts on um, where prime focus ends up being, depending on how hot it is outside. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of do my old trick of using a pair of calipers on the front lens module and see uh, where we end up. It's dark in here today. What did I do with my light? Oh, there it is. All right, so here's my light. It's very hard to turn out. It's time to clean that, I guess. Last time I did this was probably July. I had it pretty close, but it's been about six months and the temperatures, like I said earlier, probably 70 degrees different. So who knows? Um, but let's get started and see what happens. Hmm. All better. I will have to put the flashlight down, I guess. Not sure I'm going to do this. Oh, wait. There's a hook. Ha ha! 62.03 on this one. Okay, let's do the next one. Do it on the same type of side. Yeah, so it's a little bit off. I don't know if you can see that. It's off by about two millimeters. Um, well, one millimeter, I guess, at 61.99. So that could be something to look at. Yeah, it's off a little bit. Maybe enough to maybe play with it and try to adjust it. So let's try the last one down here at the bottom. So they are awful, awful close. Um, I mean, I guess half a millimeter is probably enough to try to fix it. So I guess I will give that a shot. And I mean, I'm already at it. Why not, right? Okay, let's do it. be part of the reason it's uh <laughs> it's entirely loose 
Oh boy. Weather here just wrecks havoc on anything that sits outside, including my telescope. Well, that one's fairly tight. Yeah, that one's tight too. So, well, that is definitely going to be causing problems if the scope moves around. That might be uh, my entire issue right there. So uh, I think what I'll do is get this one kind of recalibrated so where it's cinched up. And um, then I'll take another measurement and then try to get the other two close to where this one lands. Looks all right. What I should do, why don't I turn these lights on? Genius. And Valley Astro said, let there be light. I'll have to do a video on this at some point. Um, this is my flat screen. Um, what I end up doing, it's not quite smooth enough to do it without a t-shirt or whatever on the OTA, but you can see I've got it kind of lined up here with uh, the scope. So all I have to do is park it and take flats. But that was kind of a neat fun build. I did that a few years ago. I'll, uh, I'll do a video on that. help if you turn it on right every time i get close to this thing i freak out i'm gonna poke it with the glass but just take your time and be careful i suppose see if i can get it right between the screws all right 62 so it moved for sure okay let's check the other screws yeah so this one's got to come out so we want to listen this guy shh midgen two thousand years later so the next step what I want to do is check and see how uh, well aligned the focuser plate is to the front of the telescope. Now, what I did a while ago, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but there's a hole directly in the center of this plate. This is the lens cap for the front of the telescope. And what I did a long time ago is I got a super accurate um, uh, measurement around this plate. and probably close enough it might be within a half millimeter or so but what it does is it kind of lets me know if I put a laser collimator into the focuser and I can see it coming out this hole at least I know it's close um, the right way to do it is to put a piece of paper in front of the telescope with a laser collimator a laser collimator rather in the focuser and then spin the focuser ideally you would do this off of the scope like if you had a bench um, uh, like a, I don't know what we call it. I guess it's like a lathe, but it doesn't have the other half. Uh, I've seen them do it on YouTube videos where you put the collimator in this thing and you have a piece of paper maybe eight feet away and you spin this device. There's a chuck that holds on to the inside of the focuser. And when it spins, if you can see the laser at the other end wobbling, you know it's not lined up in the draw tube. But first, before we can get to that, I want to make sure this plate seems to be uh, in a good situation. So. That is a good test for this. So I'm going to put this on and see if we can spot a laser coming out the end. I also keep this dew t uh, the dew shield back because this thing tends to tilt and uh, when it's expended all the way. And since I'm trying to get a, a rough idea, I keep it pushed all the way again, as far as I can go. Cool. So next step, uh, I need to take all the camera rigging off here, um, which isn't too bad. It's just some cables and you unscrew. So we got all that. Eh, doesn't too bad. Wait, no, I don't. That's, <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. That's the wrong thing. I might have to go inside and get the right one.
Let's see, let's write it in here. Voila. Like so. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Here it is. So this is uh, a Howie Gladder laser collimator. Um, I've had this for years and it's really a fantastic piece of kit. Um, solid stainless steel, or I think that's aluminum actually, um, built like a tank. And the neat thing about these guys is that uh, you can unthread the laser, Chris, I don't know what you want to call it, it's like a lens and interchange this with uh, ones that actually shoot a pattern. So if you've got like something like this where you don't have mirrors, uh, you can switch this out and change it to one that'll shoot through the refractor and give you a nice collimation pattern on the wall. Uh, the difficulty with collimating a refractor is you don't have any mirrors. So in a uh, reflector telescope, uh, like a daub or a Newtonian style, the mirror can be used to collimate the entire optical train. Um, and the way that works is on the focuser on the side of the tube, there's a, what's called the secondary, and it's tilted at an angle that it lets the primary mirror bounce the light off of it and into your, uh, into your focuser. So if you have a laser, you can put the laser into the focuser and have the beam bounce off the secondary down to the primary and then back right directly where it came uh, and started from your telescope is collimated. Well, with a refractor, you don't have anything to bounce the laser off of. It's a little more challenging. So the best way you can do it is just to shoot the laser straight through it and, and see how things are lining up. Okay, so with a little luck, we should see a laser beam. Yep, I see one. See it over there, you guys? Right here. That's where the laser's at. I don't know if you can see that or not. So it seems to be awful close to the center of this uh, lens cap here. Another little trick somebody uh, posted on Cloudy Nights is to take measurements across the uh, OTA. Um, so you go one direction like this and you go another direction like this and you measure where the laser beam intersects with the ruler. So let's try that. You can see I've got the laser beam on me. So I know it's coming out of here. There it is right there, right? Can you see it on the ruler? So let's measure that. We'll start over here right at zero on the dew shield. And I'm getting about, let's see where are we at here, 18 or so? No, about 17 and a half centimeters. Seems awful close. Aha. So I don't know if you guys can see that. But it seems like it is not moving a whole bunch, which is good news. I'm also not sure if I mentioned it already, but I picked up one of these um, uh, scatter laser modules for that Howie Gladder laser collimator. Um, actually, in the edit, I'll just show you what it looks like. It, what it does is it, it puts this grid on the wall with a laser point in the middle. And what I can do is get that into my laser collimator here and just splash it on the screen and all the stuff I've been doing by hand and trying to do with those calipers, I can just do pretty simply. So it wasn't exceedingly expensive. I think it was like $70. Um, but I ordered it today and um, uh, maybe we'll run through this again once I get that and maybe do a review on it too. So anyway, I'm gonna put this all back together and uh, wrap up in here and, and get inside. It's getting kind of cold. I am notorious for putting tools down and forgetting what I do with them. And it's gotta be around here somewhere, right? What do I do with it? Is that it? No, it's not it. I 
put that there. Don't forget. In the world, Alan Ranch, where are you? Where are you, Alan Ranch? You here? No. No. Is this still recording? Not here. How is that possible? A cool video this is turning out to be. It's just me hunting down. <laughs> ah, you sneaky little.